Hello! Happy Tuesday! Thank you for joining me tonight, everyone. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour together, and we work on projects all the way through from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. And you can chit chat and ask your questions. And uh, it's just fun seeing and chit chatting with you guys in the evening. All right, you guys, we are continuing on the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along. Uh, I have been sewing uh, the, the quilt blocks from that sampler into groups of four. Then we have been quilting those groups of four, and now we are going to start joining those groups of four in this technique called quilt as you go. So we have done uh, three panels of those four already, and you can see that they are connected uh, into a quilt basically already. So it is a fully quilted, quilt we are not going to have to go back and quilt this when the whole entire front is done it is done right now front batting um, back the whole thing is ready to go so we join these blocks together with this little kind of sashing we have some sashing here and then on the back we also have some sashing but this is actually treated kind of like a binding like a quilt binding and we're going to go over that today so we'll probably actually attach um, attach another uh, quadrant to, to this tonight. Um, so we'll cut some fabric to prep for the back. And yeah, we will, we will start attaching this. So this is kind of the real guts of the quilt as you go process. Um, as far as, this is, uh, this is my first time doing it so, uh, with this quilt. So we're kind of all learning together here too, but it's just kind of magical being able to quilt those little things and knowing that I'm not gonna have to sandwich this quilt together later or uh, um, do all this quilting on a giant quilt in my little sewing machine. So it's been kind of a neat process so far. Uh, how many sections am I doing? Well, I'm doing groups of four. So I will have five groups of four, which will make it 20 across and this and five groups of four going down. So which will make it, uh, um, it'll be a hundred total. So 25 by 25, well, that doesn't make sense. Whatever 100 is, <laughs> oh, it'll be 10. So yeah, five. So it'll be 10 across and 10 down. So that will be a uh, hundred blocks total and a hundred blocks is what this sampler is. So a hundred, <laughs> hundred blocks total, uh, 10 by 10. So it'll be five groupings of four by five groupings of four. That's, that's what I'm doing. And I'm also adding a little sashing in between as well. All right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll get started. All right, so here are my groups that I have done. So just so you know, um, this technique, it does make like a little sashing area in between the blocks. So um, I know some people have asked, can you do this without a sashing? So a sashing is basically like a border um, within the quilt. So it's a border that circles around the blocks. And uh, you can see mine right here. I, I did it white, so it kind of blends in with the background. And then we have like this little colorful square in the middle. Um, so I did that. Um, you do not have to do that. My mom is actually doing quilt as you go for the first time as well, but she is for her splendid sampler two quilt. She has just sewn four blocks together. And frankly, you don't even need to sew four blocks together. You could sew like nine blocks together and then sew a little bit or quilt a little bit larger piece. We just decided on four because we thought that this was kind of a nice size. Um, but I have sashing in the middle of my blocks. She does not. She just bumped the four blocks together. However, to combine the sections, it will make a sashing. So ultimately, like if you did not do sashing, if you did no borders for your individual ones and you sewed four together, you would end up with a sashing around the whole thing. So you would just end up with like larger, larger borders. And you don't actually need to add this little colorful piece in. Um, I, I did this small sashing in the middle of mine to mimic what this process makes. So the quilt as you go process is going to make this little connecting um, sashing that's two, that's a half inch 
a half inch wide. So we just mimicked that by making half inch wide uh, sashing here. And then also on the back, you will have that same thing. You will have a little um, extra piece here. So keep that in mind when you're kind of designing how you want to do your quilt. If you do quilt as you go, at least in this technique, what we're doing, you will have a sashing along the way. I'm kind of blending it into mine with the white. Um, but you could make this a theme too. Like you could sew four blocks together and then, you know, like with a bright color or something, do like a bright sashing. Then you would have like these blocks together with like these tiny little borders. That could be super duper cool as well. Um, but this does make that border. All right. So what I want to do first is, okay, we've trimmed these all down. My trimmed block is 13 inches. If you uh, are just sewing four blocks together, I think it'll be probably 12 and a half inches, um, minus 13 because of that extra sashing. All right, so I got four of these ready to go. What we need though is now some 13 inch back binding pieces. And I have some scraps left. I wonder if any of these are 13 inches long. Um, it's, oh good, this one will, this one's good. Uh, it has to mimic it has to be the same size as our block. So 13 inches. Oh, there's quite a bit here. So I'm going to just, you know what, I'm going to press this first and then I'm going to fold it a couple times. Uh, for the back binding piece, you're going to need to make um, one and a half inch strips, I believe. Quarter, quarter, half. Yeah, so we're going to need to make one and a half inch strips which is different from the front. So for the front, I have some done already. For the front, you'll still need the 13 inches. Uh, mine, I'm assembling, I'm, a, I'm making my 13 inches by two one inch strips. So these are one inch. I'm gonna do um, two like that. And then let's see, we'll grab, then I have some of these little squares already cut up from before. So let's just grab this guy. Um, Oh, that's kind of the same as that one. Let's, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I have kind of like random one inch squares. So I got some, some of those. That's one inch squares, then one inch strips. These are six and a half inches each, or you could do one long strip that's 13 inches. Um, the same, same as the back, but you need to end up with two pieces that are the same and the same height as your, your block. So let's press this. Um, we'll leave this aside. I will need to cut a whole pile more of these white strips, but I think we have enough for tonight. And I don't know where my white fabric is. I'm going to have to dig it up. So, um, <laughs> so we will cut some white strips tomorrow, but we'll cut a, we'll cut a few of these, these golden, um, golden strips today. So remember the front is the one inch wide. The back is the one and a half inch. It's a little bit different. And it's because we're going to use them in, in different ways. And, and I'll show you what we mean by that soon here. I think this is probably good enough. There's still a lot of wrinkles in it, but it's definitely, definitely laying a bit flatter. Okay. So now I'm going to just fold this a few times just so it's easier to cut. There you go, I'm kind of, this edge looks like it's been cut nicely at one point. So I'm gonna line up those edges and we'll do it one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this, um, trim this, this edge nice. It's just a little frayed. So we're gonna just make it a bit better. We'll go right here. And then we'll just cut some one and a half inch strips here. Okay, again, this is just to kind of clean, clean up this edge. Okay. And I'm going to grab my, well, you know what? I'll just rotate this around. Sometimes I like grabbing a second ruler, but I'm just going to rotate the whole thing around here. 
and we'll cut a bunch of one and a half inch strips now. And then I'll cross cut these to 13 inches. So we'll have a whole pile of them ready. I think it's one and a half, because if I fold it in half, then I got one, or I got um, a quarter and a half. Yeah, okay, this is right. <laughs> one and a half. Okay, that's one strip. I'm gonna just shimmy this off. I don't wanna move it too much. Oh, I suppose it doesn't matter. I'm gonna unfold these before I cut them into the 13 inch strips. This is good. We'll have, we'll have a library of these ready to go. Um, Cause we do have, we have four, four of these sets um, that we made, the sets of four blocks. We have four of those. Okay, this one I think is a bit, well, yeah, we get, get a little, little thin there. Yep, that one's not gonna work. Okay, so three, that's good enough for tonight. So let's take those now. I think we'll just rotate them like this. I'm gonna open them up. Um, so now it's just folded in half and I'm gonna cut uh, 13 inches from here. I'm gonna just lay them all on top of each other. They're kind of dangling off the edge a little bit. So we'll cut the selvages off and then 13 inches. And let's see, I don't know what we'll end up with with the fold, but we'll at least get a couple 13 inches out of it. All right, I'm kind of lining them all up on um, a rule line on my, on my mat, just so I know that they're kind of relatively straight. And I gently put them on top of each other just because there is two layers and I didn't want to shuffle of them. So this is, this is kind of a lot of layers of fabric I'm cutting through right now. So hopefully it works all right. Might be time to switch this blade out again soon. All right, there we go. We got a nice good edge there. I'm gonna try and rotate this without them all falling off. Because we got some hang over there. Okay, 13 inches. I am going to manually count. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna tilt it for you guys a little bit. Cause I freak out in the evening for measuring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. And it looks like we might have enough. Oh my God, I just got paranoid. Just got paranoid. All right, 13 inches. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh my god. All right. <laughs> there we go. So here are a pile of 13 inch. I think we got six of them out of there. And you know what? I think we can get a couple, a couple more here. I just, I have like this paranoia, um, <laughs> Gretchen, you're talking about a uh, not good math person. I kind of have this paranoia that I won't, like sometimes where numbers are on rulers are, they're positioned like super poorly and I never know like, oh, which line um, is this number referring to? And it's just so stupid, but I just sometimes freak out. It's like a weird little phobia. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There we go. Great. We got three more pieces out of here. Zoop. All right. Awesome. So we just got nine pieces. That's amazing. All right. We are going to prep these pieces. So um, we are not quite done. Um, we need to press these. I think I'll move my pressing mat up here for you guys. We need to press these the long way, which is the same as if you were doing like a binding. So we need to press them in this direction. So which can be a, a little, a little goofy. Um, so, and we need to do the wrong sides together. So if you are doing something with like a pretty, pretty uh, uh, decorative fabric, you know, like 
like one of these guys or something, make sure that when you press it, the, uh, um, the pretty side, the right side of the fabric is, is outward. All right, so we're gonna do that with a few of these, at least one. Maybe we'll just, well, you know what? We got them all cut, we might as well prep them all. I'm just worried that maybe they'll come on, um, maybe they uh, won't stay pressed very nicely. We'll have to do it again, but I don't know. Maybe the, maybe it'll be okay. I suppose we could go through one tonight so you guys can see the whole process, and then I can worry about um, pressing and everything else later. Let's do that. That'll be more fun. But after that, I'm going to go ahead and press all of these. We do need to cut more white strips, and we probably need to cut more of these as well. So tonight, we'll go through the whole process, but tomorrow, we are going to... Um, we'll press all of these, we'll cut more, we'll just get booted up. Oh, I love, I really do love the, the wool pressing mat. Um, so this is, a, this is a wool pressing mat. It's about, oh gosh, like three quarters of an inch thick. It's awesome. Like, uh, that was just high heat here. It's still cool on the other side, so I'm not worried about it. Like, well, you know, I'm a little worried about pressing on my table here. Usually, this is the first time I've really done that. Um, so I'd still rather press on the wood here, but I, I just love it. I love that I can move it around, and this one is just the right size for, for my little spot here. All right, let's sew something, you guys. All right, get this guy back. So to start out, we do need to finish prepping our other 13 inch piece. So we have the 13 inch backing piece. Um, it's folded with the pretty side out, the right side out. But we need our other 13 inch piece and our other 13 inch piece is made up of, um, you know, our little assembly here. So it mimics uh, the sashing of um, the our front of the fabric or the front of the quilt. You don't need to do all these separate pieces, but this is uh, just, um, this is, uh, so it mimics the sashing. Uh, my, my wool uh, mat, I believe it's like 12 by 18 inches and they do make a larger one. Uh, my mom has the larger one and for her space, she has a little bit bigger sewing space. I mean, I'm working on my tiny kitchen table here where my sewing machine, where everything's here. Um, but yeah, if you have a little bit bigger table, I would totally recommend a, a bigger one just cause you know, a bigger one would be amazing. Um, but the small one works great in my particular area here. All right, I'm gonna just sew these guys together. Then we will uh, press them. And then we will have both of our pieces ready to go. Both of our 13 inch pieces. All right, that's the first side. Get another leader here. Oh, my leader um, basket is getting pretty full here. Hold on. I'm making um, out of these these leaders. I got them all cut into squares and I have them separated in, into lights and darks. And I'm hoping, oop, dropped one. I'm hoping to eventually I don't know, maybe this will even become a quilt. This is all recycled clothing. Um, I think this might've been a bathrobe and this is some shirt. Um, just putting a little diagonal line there by folding it. It's kind of hard to tell because this is a flannel, so it doesn't want to keep the fold. Oh, you guys, I just, I didn't even sew. Okay, that was dumb. I got all, I got all into my, um, my triangles, see these are gonna turn out to be half squared triangles once I cut them in half, but I didn't even sew my real thing. <laughs> so now I gotta get another one of those uh, pieces together. Oh no, I can just clip it off of here. All right, so right sides together. Ah, oh, goodness. All right, let's just snip this off and put it on the front. That's what I was intending on doing.
Yeah, I love it. I love it, Daniela. I'm so excited. Uh, one of our Finish It Fridays, so maybe our, um, maybe in a March, April, God, it's April next month already. Um, so every first Friday of the month, I stop what I'm doing and I uh, work on some other project that we have laying around. So my, my little bin of those is, is getting kind of big or getting full. It would be nice to uh, empty them out again. Just trim them and we could even sew together what we have. That would be kind of fun. Okay, so I just pressed these outward. I think that's what I want to do here. I'm just peeking. Yeah, so so on the quilt I pressed my sashing inward, so I want I want these um, seam allowances, this that to go outward. Uh, just because then I can nest the seams. But here we go, you guys. Now we have our our 13 inch pieces. So uh, this is our front 13 inch piece, our back 13 inch piece, and then we have, of course, our middle bit. So I'm going to, let's grab what I have done for um, for the quilt so far. All right, so I have these three pieces, these three segments sewn together. So here, hold on, here is our first um, four blocks that we did. Here are the second four, and here's the join. Here's another join, and here's the third. So I need to go five across. So we have three across right now, or, you know, uh, six blocks, um, six of these little blocks. So we need four more. That's two more things. We should be able to get that um, with our four ones that we have, we can get a whole row done. So we're basically picking now um, the next one to go on top. And you know what? I think this might look cute. Um, the little, this guy with the, the tree, the bird can go by the tree maybe. So I, th I think this will be our next one um, to add to the top of our quilt here. So um, to start out, I'm gonna take uh, the part that we have done already here and I am going to take our pieces and I think I'm going to get some wonder clips out here too. So let's get some, some little clips. You can use pins if you like. But we are going to put the top, we're going to put the, we're going to line up on the edge or we're going to put right sides together. Oh, I think I wanted to repair this one. Yeah, we're going to make it work. I don't want to repair it. We'll just stitch the binding on really close there or something. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to put the, with right sides together, we're going to put the top piece on. Then we're going to line it up with the edge of our quilt. And then we're going to take the raw edge. So where the, the two pieces are folded together, the, the edge that's not the fold, we're going to put those, um, edges together here as well. So we will have this big layer right here. So all of these two raw edges, the, you know, the whole quilt with the front back and batting, and then our front piece here. So what I'm going to do first, just so I can line up, line up my um, cute little square with the sashing here, I'm going to just kind of nest that as best I can. And it probably won't be perfect. And I'm going to just throw a clip in there to, just to get started. There we go. All right. So I think I'm going to throw a clip at the top, maybe in the middle here. And I'm going to move these clips to get the back on too. So let's, let's do that now. So I'm going to line up this back edge. Oh, don't have this open. That doesn't work. Try that again. So this is going to be a lot that we're quilting through here now, but sewing through, but that's totally fine. All right, I'm going to just move this clip and get the back in there. Same here, I'm gonna just remove it and put it back. And let's get, let's go all the way to the bottom. Line up that edge and this edge. Our 
have such a hard time grabbing onto these. All right, and then one more in the middle here, and that should do the job, I think. Um, so if you are, if you, if one of your blocks here is one where you have to like really pay attention to corners, like points, uh, make sure that you're being aware of that too, so you can sew along that point edge. But all right, there we go. We have our three layers together there, and then we're gonna just um, sew down the row. Yep, Leslie Ann, this is still my first row. I only have three segments here, and I need uh, I need five. But we will, with what I have done, we will finish the first row, and we'll get two done on the second row as well. Not all tonight, but um, hopefully this week. So it's gonna get bigger. I'm I'm super excited for when we can sew the first two rows together. I mean, we will have a, like a legit baby quilt at that point almost. I mean, we'll have like a legit table runner when we're done here. So I mean, this would be a great idea for a table. I mean, it's already as big enough to be a table runner, but just throw a binding around this and you're done. So if you didn't, if you want to try quilt as you go, but you don't want to do a whole, a whole quilt like I'm doing, um, yeah, just a table runner. Do three segments, give it a try, see if you like the process. All right, this needs a little help getting started. We're gonna lift it up. So this is pretty fat at this point. All right, I'm just making sure that all my layers are together. And lined up on the edge. Get that guy down. All right, that's our little cornerstone. Ooh, veered a little bit. I gotta remember that there's some thick areas on here that I gotta keep paying attention to. All right, there, and I need another leader here, so just bear with me for that. Get a light and a dark fabric. Most of my uh, light fabrics for for this like goofy thing that I'm doing here is this green um, dotted fabric, which is just so goofy. But I think it'll be fun. It's all recycled uh, clothing, and I got a whole, like, a couple more bins of just recycled clothing, and I've just been itching to do something with it. And, and someone had mentioned this idea once of actually, you know, using, making quilt blocks out of your leaders, or using, um, you know, getting another quilt done, basically, um, while I'm using it as a leader. And I just love that idea. It's like a no-waste idea. It's, it's turning into a whole other project, which I'm super stoked about. Again, we're going to be getting out of these. We're going to, once we cut it down the diagonal, we'll have two half-square triangle pieces that we'll, we'll trim them all up, and then we'll start sewing them together. Uh, so, oh, that's what I was saying, that that could be one of our Finish It Fridays. So, like, April's Finish It Friday... Um, so the first Friday in April, maybe we, we uh, uh, cut them all, press them, and trim them all up and, and see what we got so far. I think that'd be kind of fun for these leaders. And it would clean up, clean up my basket. It's hard to get the individual squares because I just keep throwing the finished ones in with the old ones. All right, so here's what we got right now. We got, um, it's kind of lined up. It's okay. Uh, we got our top piece. So I'm just going to finger press that. Um, out like that, and then we have our back piece here, which is that flap, but it has this nice folded edge, so it has a finished finished folded edge right here. I'm going to leave that flat for now. So next up, we are going to take our piece that we want to attach to it. Again, I'm doing this guy here, and uh, we are going to put that, we're going to put that right sides together with this, and I actually think I might flip the whole thing over to make it a little bit easier. So let's align these edges. And I'm definitely going to clip this again with the Wonder Clips because this, this one is that double poof, that double batting one, and it's just gonna get away from me really quick. Okay, we do have some little trouble spots, like this is almost a quarter inch, so we'll just have to remember that I have barely enough um, barely 
enough fabric there and maybe I sew in a little bit tighter there. But these other edges we repaired, so those will be fine. So I'm just kind of doing that middle just to line up that square and then I'm going to do the, the top. There we go. Oh, I didn't grab the back piece. That poof is getting away, away from me here. There, line up those edges. Wow, this is being a little unruly. I'm gonna put some extra, extra clips in here. Pull that forward. Yep, a fat quarter inch seam, exactly. <laughs> Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna go to the bottom first, just to grab that. Again, I'm lining up the, the sashing that we just sewed onto our next, um, our next piece that we're attaching. I need some more clips. We're over, over clipping this one. Just making sure that the edges are lined up. This is also where we did that repair last night where I added a little extra white edge to it. So we'll get to see what that turns out like tonight as well. All right, so again, we're just gonna sew down that edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, get situated. All right, now this has got all those clips in. We're just gonna go slow. Get my stiletto in here too. I'm just gonna move this quarter inch um, seam allowance out of the way if it, if it seems to be getting to be a problem. Eh, I think we're fine. So again, this is that super poofy batting. So it's, we're squishing it all down right now. Just check on that. Yep, all right. So we are sewing it to quite a big piece here. This is that piece that I have, um, you know, three segments. So it feels kind of like a big quilt right now, but it's still not a whole, it's not the same as trying to quilt on a whole giant quilt. I, this is quilt as you go. It's all done already. I just have to deal with it in these little segments now. Oh, I definitely think this is going to speed up the process, uh, Noeline, especially... Oh, shoot, I forgot to make that fat quarter inch seam. Hopefully we're okay. I think I kind of pulled the fabric over to begin with. So I think we'll be fine. But yeah, this is going to feel extra super fast um, once we're... Once we have these all sewn together and we realize, oh, all I have to do now is put on a binding. <laughs> I don't have to sandwich it together. I don't have to pin it together. Um, don't have to do any of that. Oh, Suzanne, you should go to bed. That is too early. All righty. Snip that one and this one. Okay, let's check this out, you guys. All right, so what we have now, oh gosh, I didn't even look to see if I pinned it on right. Oh, there we go. So here's uh, where it needed to be a little bit wider. I think we're fine. But look, now we are connected. Here's that little edge that we added on. You can kind of tell that it's there, but it's kind of fun. It just kind of dips down like that. So here we go. This is our uh, connected piece. So basically we have another, another section attached here, uh, but there is one more step to the quilt as you go process. And uh, we'll start on that tonight. There's time yet. So let's flip it over to the back. We still have to address uh, this raw edge seam. So this is the part of Quilt As You Go that before I looked into it and before my mom showed me how to do it, I couldn't wrap my head around. Like, how do you sew together quilted blocks? Like, what do you do with the raw edge? So this is what you do with the raw edge. We have both raw edges here, but we remember we made this little binding flap. So what all we have to do now is let's just flatten out these 
these seams as best we can, flatten out the bulk, and we're gonna just fold over that flap and we're gonna hand stitch this down, just like a binding. You can machine stitch it down too. Actually, if you machine stitch it, uh, you could do the folded piece for the front and do the, um, the one inch piece for the back and then you can sew from the front um, of the quilt, which, you know, will make it look probably a little nicer than, than machine sewing from the back to the front. But I like hand binding, um, so this is kind of up my alley just to, to bind this. So just like that, uh, so let's get some, let's get some thread. I'm gonna just use, I have this extra bobbin here. I'm gonna just use some of that. This is the same thread that we've been stitching it together with. And let's see, let's get, Let's get Zeb back out here. This is my uh, fish museum and circus guy. He's the one that uh, holds all my needles. So, ooh, that guy's pretty bent, but let's find another one like it. All right, here we go. This is um, my size 11 straw needle. The straw needles are a bit, or Milner's needles is another name for them, but they're a little bit longer than a normal just sharps needle. And they're nice and thin. At least the size 11 one is super duper thin uh, and they're sharp. It's very sharp. So the super thin one is gonna make it easy to go through our uh, fabric really well. So let's get this guy, put Zeb back for now. And I need a little scissors. Here we go. We got our little penguin fish scissors here as well. Okay, you know what? And I think I will put the ruler, not the ruler, this guy down as well so, so it doesn't glare. Glare for you guys. Needles getting away from me. All right, I'm gonna get real close now. All right, and this is getting real close with you guys here is gonna reveal my situation of the week. <laughs> so I, this week, I'm having so much trouble with my nails just completely breaking. I've been doing a lot of folding boxes and cleaning up and stuff and I have broken a nail every single day and they're down to just nubs. And so don't look too close at my nails. And give me all of your uh, advice on getting strong nails because it's driving me crazy. So I remember we did this last time and I couldn't remember what direction I liked going better. So I, I put a binding on in this direction. I know a lot of people think that's backwards. They do it the other direction, but I go this direction. I think what I did is I, I folded this over like this so I could have my hand wrapped around yeah, this, this feels right. Yep, this feels right. Okay. It's been a while. It's been a while since we've sewn these together. Oh, prenatal vitamins for, for nails. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel in the last couple days... Oh, gelatin in a glass of water every day. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I think it just got super dry in here again. I've been folding boxes and that's been wearing on my nails like a ton. Like, it'll, that's what's really breaking them, but I was hoping it wouldn't break so easily. So they are literally down to the nubs. Um, so I just, and I've been um, just because of, I've do, been doing all that boxing stuff, it chips nail polish and stuff too, too. So that's why I haven't been wearing nail polish in a while. and. So I apologize for my current state of the state of nails and I need to figure out how to make them stronger. Oh, and you guys, I, um, John and I signed up. We got Y passes this week and I'm hoping to start swimming. Um, I used to swim in high school and I thought it would be really kind of I don't know, I'm trying to get a new routine down and I think swimming um, is gonna be the test, what I wanna do. I'm gonna get even closer here for you guys. Hopefully I don't, I might hit the camera every once in a while. But um, the swimming is gonna make it difficult to wear nail, nail polish that won't go away in a day too. So I need some way to make my nails look nice, nice for you guys here. So I need to, Tips. Ooh, gummy vitamins for hair, skin, nails every day. I'll have to look into something like that. I don't, I don't do, um, do vitamins like that. Oh, 
Oh, just gelatin from the baking section. <laughs> I'll have to look into that idea too. All right, so I've just folded over my binding. I tied a knot and I came up through the binding. And then we're gonna just do that stitch that I normally do for binding. It's, so I'm going, I'm, I'm only in the binding piece now. I wonder if they call it a binding in quilt as you go. I'm calling it a binding because it feels like doing a quilt binding. Um, so then I'm going directly across, but into the back of the, the back fabric here, not the binding. See, I'm right here in the back. And I came back up through the back, but I'm also gonna come up at the same time through the binding again. So there we go. I, we uh, um, came through the binding, went directly across into the back, and then went like a stitch length over, so like maybe an eighth of an inch or a little bit more. Uh, and then we came back up through the back and the binding. And then we're gonna just pull that. That's our first little stitch that's kind of wrapped around the edge there. That'll, that'll get sewn into our quilt once we do our next thing. And, I, and I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cover that seam line that we just made um, from sewing that sashing on. So I'm kind of pulling it over and I'm just getting that first layer of fabric. So just this backing fabric. I don't want to actually go through the whole way and I definitely don't want to go through this folded piece that I'm holding. Um, oop, so up through both pieces. I kind of cut maybe a little too long of piece. So in the back and then the front. So what is this is doing is it's just making a couple little tiny little tick marks like like that. This stitch. Oh gosh, stab myself. So this will um this will get fast. So it's kind of like, I like that we have a few of these that we have to get done all at once. Cause I think by the time I do a few of these, I'm going to get in the rhythm of, of doing this again. It's a little awkward yet, but it's starting to, starting to come back to me again. I do like, I really do like this hand stitching. So this is probably someone else's nightmare. Um, because if you like, if you like hand binding a quilt, this is going to feel, uh, awesome. Um, if you don't like hiding, hand binding a quilt, which I know a lot of people just can't stand, you may want to consider the uh, just machine stitching this on. And again, if you do machine stitch it, you might want to think about doing this folded binding piece in the front. And uh, then um, having the one inch piece on the back, because then you'll You'll sew, like, if I was going to machine sew this, I'd sew it on this side, and I would just sew along, along this folded edge. That's going to look much nicer on the front if you're, you know, sewing from the front than if I would do this on the back, then I don't know where it would fall on the other side, so that's why you might want to flip it around. Okay, i got to make this thread a little shorter. Let's just pull on this. Too long. So I'm not sure we'll finish hand stitching this tonight, but this is the last step of the quilt as you go process, just hand stitching this binding. And the thing is, you could attach a whole pile of these um, and then sit around and bind a whole pile of them. Like I could, um, if I had the next two, next pieces prepared, like if I had the next back binding piece and the next front sashing piece prepared, I could have sewn on the next square and uh, uh, just let this hang out like this. You know, it's all sewn together. I just haven't done the flip over and binding. So you could do a whole pile of them at once, do them all, but just do them for one row, um, you know, cause we'll want them all sewn together before we put rows together. All right, let's get Cruz in here. Yes, exactly. Movie, binge, and so like crazy. That's the, the best. For me, it would be, um, for me, it would be series TV. I've been binge watching that. Although this weekend, this past weekend, the husband and I watched um, Bohemian Rhapsody. So that was fun. Uh, we, we rented it at home on like iTunes or something and watched it. That was our Sunday morning. We watched 
had a Sunday morning movie <laughs> at home. So that was fun. But right now I am watching, I'm watching True Blood on HBO and I'm also watching The Crown on, on Netflix. I'm like mid second season in The Crown and like third season or something in True Blood. I've seen that already once, but it popped up again and I thought, eh, it'd be kind of fun to watch again. So those are my two binges <laughs> in separate separate rooms. Oh, and you know what? I just started watching Queer Eye again, too, so I'm one episode into that. So, man, people, I got three series television shows that I'm watching all at once now. Oh, you went to Queen in concert when you were young? Oh my god, Gretchen, that would be amazing. Oops, I'm through a lot. This has got a lot of stitching right here in the quilting. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I would be able to do that, the AD version of Pride and Prejudice. I actually am not a huge fan of period pieces like that, and so I'm surprised I... I kind of surprised myself by watching The Crown, but it's, it's just right. I, I've been doing a lot of um, kind of computer work, like like image work like photoshop and that sort of stuff and uh i don't have to i don't have to like read stuff or concentrate or write or anything for that so that's but i need something on to just keep me sitting there and uh the crown has been perfect for that because i don't have to watch it i don't there's no like big action whatever that i have to pay attention to and watch um but it's still really good so it's engaging enough but you know at its slow pace because it's you know that's the style for for that genre kind of but yeah it's really good so far i'm enjoying it all right we are about four inches into this 13 inches i think you know what time is it oh 10 minutes? I don't know. Can we finish this in 10 minutes? I think we're at the point now, the point of no return, meaning like I'm not, I'm not stopping this till it's done because it'd be annoying to leave just that little bit. So let's try and speed this up. I'm getting in the groove now. <laughs> yep, maybe that's why I started. No, I think, I think I had already started watching the crown um, before watching Bohemian Rhapsody, but that'd be funny. Maybe that was in the back of my head. The theme was Queen. <laughs> I don't know. Got Queen on the brain. Oh no, your, your needle broke. That's a huge bummer. I think I got um, these straw needles. I think I got them in like a pack of eight or something. So if this guy busts, then, then I'll have some backups. I think this is more likely to bend in half than it is to, to break. I have another one that's pretty bent. Oh, I can't see. I can't watch those crime documentaries. I don't. I don't like that real life stuff of just these horrible things. I can't watch that stuff. Yeah, I know a lot of people really, really love those. I just, ugh. I haven't watched any, and I don't think I can. I just can't do it. All right, now we're we're about halfway. I'm still trying to pull this up to the to the sewing line, the stitch line, so I'm covering that up. Yep, this is a size 11 straw needle, and what I like specifically about the 11 is that it's it's one of the smaller size needles. So the higher the number of the needle, the smaller it is. The thinner, the thinner it is. Um, so it's super narrow, which makes it easily to easily bent. So they do 
bend more away than other needles, but they're so thin that they get through this quilting weight fabric like, like, like butter. So I, that's, that's why I like them. It's worth it to me for that. They're good and sharp and they, ow, easily get through this fabric as I stab myself. Oh, she used to make jelly and put extra gelatin in it for her names, nails. Huh, so maybe I just, where would I get like, what would you eat that would naturally have that? Maybe I'm just not eating enough meat lately or something. I don't know. Yeah, that can't be true for some gelatin. Maybe I need to make some bone broth and have some soup or something. That would do it, right? Yeah, that has gelatin in. Ha, I like the British cooking shows too, yep. Give me the great British uh, baking show anytime. That's some pure relaxation enjoyment, that show for sure. All right, we're getting there, now we're cruising. This block, um, the back block, is has hardly any quilting in. It's on that fat, that fat batting and, and uh, without all that quilting, it's a whole lot easier to stitch through faster. Oh, she used to cut it up and eat a piece or two throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I need to do something cause just, ugh, it's driving me crazy. Oh, sorry you guys, I think I was off screen there a little bit. Yeah, the thin needles, they definitely mold to the shape of the finger. Um, yeah, it is actually that the curve, it, it's not, it's not harming it for sure that this needle is getting bent. It's bending in just the right places for what I need it for. Oh, it helps you absorb calcium too. Oh, well, that's interesting. All right, I need to get on top of that. That might be this weekend project, just uh, figuring out how to get more gelatin. Oh, yours snap? Oh man, I my first thought would be try a different brand of needle and, and see see if a different needle does the same. Um, yeah, I don't know why they would just break if you're really holding on them to them really hard. But I, even with, I would, I would try some new, a different needle brand and see if that does the same thing. All right, we are almost through. Oh, do they go brittle with age? Oh, I wonder, I don't know. It could be, I'm not sure. You know what? Um, I did learn a lot about needles lately though. Um, so, so needles, um, they go through this process to harden them. So maybe they didn't go through this process very well. So they, they go through a process where they, um, they get fired really hot and then they get cooled really quickly, I think. And, um, that process hardens them, I believe. So it might've just been a little bit cheaper made or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can treat them with gel gelatin. <laughs> treat them needles. Oh, Sh Shelly, I just, um, or I, oh, I, it, the thing, I can't see if Shelly or Sherry wrote that, but uh, yeah, once I get in the groove, oops, wow, got a loop there. Once I get in the groove, then, um, then the binding goes faster. If if it's not comfortable, like if you're not getting comfortable with it, like your hands just feel weird, try going from a different direction. Like maybe it's more comfortable for you to hold this vertically instead of horizontally. Or I know some people when they watch me bind a quilt like this, or I mean, you know, an actual quilt edge, they're like, you're going the wrong way and upside down. <laughs> and um, so like they would feel more comfortable if this whole thing was rotated 180 degrees and they'd be stitching on the bottom, not on the top like I am, but that just feels weird in my hands. So um, try different, a couple different ways. 
and you might find a way that just um, clicks with you. Like give, give it a shot, like try, you know, for a few inches at least. Or, you know, the other direction might be easier. All right, I'm kind of pulling them over the edge here to try and cover up my, my stitches here. One thing I also like doing is I don't, I mean, I use a little bit longer thread than I usually like to. I don't use a super long piece of thread because then I have to pull my arm way far away and it can get tangled. The thread can get tangled a little bit more. So I err on slightly shorter, um, like I don't, I don't go over two feet. This one I wanted to at least get it, um, I didn't want to change threads in the middle of this, so I did it a little longer. So it's at least 13 inches. It's but probably not quite twice that. Oh, that's interesting, Jenna. That could be too. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, it's just, it's a little piece of metal and you push on a little piece of metal for a while, it'll probably break. Oh, yours go rusty close to the ocean. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, you love, love, love hand quilting and sewing. Okay, this might be right up your alley then. But again, if you don't, this can be done with the machine as well. But yeah, and you could do a whole pile of them at once before doing all the hand binding. And um, I might, well, if we ever get like five of these just ready to go, then I might leave them all till later. I don't know. Maybe I won't. I kind of like, ooh, I stabbed my thread really weird here. Um, I kind of like trading off agendas here. Like I like sewing it together and then taking a break of, then from sewing and then, then doing some hand stitching. I kind of like the variety a little bit. But if you know you got a whole afternoon that you can watch some movies, then I'd prep a whole pile of these before binding them or hands doing the hand stitching part. All right, I'm just tying a little knot here. And I'm just going to kind of tuck it in. So back and forth a little bit in the seam. The seam is going to get covered once we uh, put put it together. I'm going to put my needle back um, with Zeb and scissors. Okay, that's it, you guys. We quilt as you go to another block. So here, let's let's take a look at it. So here it is from far away. That's that little binding strip. So you can see, you know, it does. It's not quilted, so it is going to be this little unquilted half-inch um, line going through your quilt. And you know, like this quilting isn't connected over here, but I think that's kind of it's going to be framing up our little pieces, which is kind of kind of neat, I think. All right, and then from the front, there we go. So those raw edges are totally cap uh, captured in between our that sashing piece and that binding piece, and we got. We have a, a whole another section. Oh man, the four like this, this is this would be a really cute table runner, actually. And all I would do if I wanted to finish this as a table runner, I would put a binding around the outside and and it'd be done. So there we go. And here's that last piece. So all right, so tomorrow, tomorrow we will cut more or not um, not more of these, but we'll we'll press all these in half so they're prepped. And I do think we may have to cut more of these, but I don't know. Maybe we'll just maybe we'll just do exactly what we did today. Um, fold just one and get the last piece on because because only there's only going to be one more in this one. So yeah, maybe we'll just do that. We'll have to pick which one which one we want on here yet. So we got three to pick from. So that'll be tomorrow, you guys. So all right, I'm going to uh, flip this around and. Um, call it a day. Oh, here's what the poofy looks like next to the thin. So this is that really poofy stuff. Here's that thin cotton. Um, you know, it may shrink differently, but I'm sure it's not going to shrink so much that it, you know, the quilt's going to be wonky enough. A little shrinkage difference is, you know, going to be fine, I think. 
Um, it does feel more poofy, but again, we, we left some big quilting, big open areas here, so it is gonna feel more poofy there. In the part that we stitched, like, here, here you can kind of see, there's, a, it's, it's really densely quilted here. It's also rather densely quilted here. Those areas feel the same regardless of how much batting. I think where it's different is when I leave these open areas, the poofy batting, you can really see the poof, um, these open areas. So that's kind of the beauty of the, the double thick. Like, I, you know, like here's a big open area. That's not nearly as poofy as, as these guys are. Um, so that's, that's the difference. But where it is quilted down, um, they're about equal, I would say. All right, you guys, there we go. Now I'm going to flip. Okay, so that was, ooh, let's scooch over here. That was the quilt as you go process. That magic way that we can magically have a quilted quilt done. Like seriously, all we have to do is bind this if we, if we felt that we were uh, big enough here. But there, now we got four, oop, four, four sections together. Ah, it's gonna be so pretty. All right, so one more. So this will be a, this will be a rather big quilt. This is definitely gonna be a large. It would be a large lap quilt if I if I put a big border on this um, when it's done. Then it could be you know a queen size quilt or something like that as well. Um, but right now I think it's just gonna be a really big comfy square quilt, <laughs> a really um, like a uh, big lap quilt that's square. And I might just leave it like that, but we'll see. That's a decision we can make later. <laughs> All right, you guys, um, I'm gonna call it a night. So thanks again for joining me and I will uh, be here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, I'll let you know how the why day number one went <laughs> swimming day number one I'm nervous I haven't I used to swim in high school but that was 20 years ago so you know <laughs> that's my last lap pool experience I suppose uh, so we'll see um, but and then I'll get this up on YouTube tonight you guys too at penguin and fish movies so ask me about swimming tomorrow <laughs> and I'll see you later you guys good night